I want to bring in Hans von Spakovsky, who, who breaks down all this stuff for us. He is, of course, the manager of the Election Law Reform Initiative and the Siegel Senior Legal Fellow at the Mies Center for Legal and Judicial Studies at the Heritage Foundation. Okay, Hans, they did it again. Uh, let's talk about what happened today with the decisions. Sure, and, you know, uh, John Roberts is on, 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 on an unfortunate role Uh there's a, there, were, there was a case out of Louisiana called June Medical. And Louisiana passed a law which, from a medical sense, made perfect, uh, perfect sense. Uh, they said that any doctor who performs abortions in a clinic or elsewhere has to have admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of their clinic. And the reason for that is, is obvious. Um, when complications can arise from these kind of abortions. And if a woman has to be rushed to the hospital, if the doctor who's most familiar with her condition isn't right there to help with the treatment, um, it, it, it imperils the safety and health of, of the woman. But no, instead, uh, the court said that this was an unconstitutional um, uh law because it intruded into the right of women to have abortion. What's so unbelievable about the case is that, and naturally it was the four liberal justices uh, again, but they were joined by John Roberts. And what's so odd about this is, look, the Louisiana law was almost identical to a Texas law that four years ago in another case before the Supreme Court called, uh, called Whole Woman's Health, and the court then also said um, that that uh, Texas law was unconstitutional. But back then, of course, Justice Kennedy was on the court. And guess who did, was in the dissent saying, no, of course the Texas law is constitutional? John Roberts. And yet he refused and he could have overturned that decision. Back then, four years ago, he said, hey, what the court's doing is wrong. Uh, this law is not, uh, not unconstitutional. And this time he switches sides and said, well, it's now starry decisive, so we can't, we can't overturn it. And this isn't a 50-year-old decision that's been relied on for years. It's only four years old. There was no reason why he could not um, have uh, joined with the other conservatives and said, no, that decision we made four years ago is wrong, and this law is perfectly constitutional. But instead... Uh, it's like he got he gets all the way to within one yard of the goal line and then gives up the ball. You know, let me ask you something, Hans, about this. When he was can remember back way back when um, uh, you know John Roberts was being you know confirmed by the Senate. Did he ever right. answer a question about his belief or his philo- uh, understanding of stare decisis? Where he, he, did anybody ask him, hey, do you believe that stare decisis must hold even if the previous decision was wrongly decided? Like, it, it, you know, you absolutely must adhere to it no matter what. Did he ever indicate his belief in that? Well, I don't know if he did that during his questioning, but he has in prior decisions as the chief justice overturned <laughs> overturned prior decisions of the court saying they're wrong. Um, it, the only thing I can figure out is that when it comes to these kind of socially controversial issues, he always chickens out because that seems to be exactly what what happened here. It's 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 very similar um, to the decisions he's made in other cases where. He gets all the way to the goal line and then, and then gives up the ball. The, look, the immigration case from last last week was another good example of that. Remember, that was the DACA case, mm-hmm. and uh, despite all the claims of the courts and and all the critics saying, "Oh no, no President Trump couldn't end that program," <laughs> what does Roberts do? He joins with the liberals and he says, "Oh no, no, President Trump can." end the program. He just didn't give a good enough explanation for his ending the program. So, you know, he choked again in that case. He did it again today in this abortion case. Yeah, what is that? I mean, this just feels very strange. Um, Is he like having... Is You know, I like how you put it. It's like he chokes. Um, He... It's like he's not the chief justice. It's Elena Kagan who's the chief justice. It's her court, really. <laughs> I kind of feel well, like. Well, like I said, when it, 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 look, 
he 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 issues good rulings in cases that are not so controversial from a social standpoint, but are important from a constitutional standpoint. But when it comes to these social issues, he just always uh, seems to, to chicken out. Look, here's the other thing to keep in mind about this abortion case today, which is just a very basic issue before you even get to, into the substance of it. And this is something raised by the dissenters, particularly Judge Thomas, which is, he said, look, this lawsuit was filed by abortion doctors, not by patients. And he said, Abortion doctors don't have uh, standing to assert this claim. Why? Because these health regulations were put in place to protect the health and safety of patients. And the doctors, uh, these abortion doctors, have a clear conflict of interest. Why? Well, because obviously they want the least regulation possible of what they're doing. So, so you know, Thomas and the other just, uh, other dissenters said, look, um, the, the physicians didn't have standing to even challenge this law because they can't assert the rights of their patients uh, over the, the statute that, that Louisiana passed, which makes perfect sense if you think about it. Uh, and yet, again, the liberals just overrode that with the help of Roberts. Yeah, I mean, can you can think of even a comparable situation where it's like uh, the court would, you know, rule in favor of some organization, uh, even uh, some kind of company? or business, where they're basically saying, we're against this law because it regulates us, and uh, <laughs> and we don't like the way it's regulating us. I mean, it, 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 the way that you just put it there, and the way that, you know, uh, Justice Thomas put it in his dissent, kind of says it all. It's like, this bill was supposed to be protecting women, and it's being challenged by the people that were being regulated by it. Right. <laughs> no, no, I... I I can't think of a similar situation. I think it was just it, it was just uh, a wrong decision. Uh, look, on the other hand, but again, he he just made a wrong decision. Look, you know, they had another big case today involving the Consumer fin- Financial Protection Bureau. Mm-hmm. And remember, that's the CFPB was that that horrible agency created by the Dodd Frank bill, where Congress structured it so that uh, nobody would have any control over it. You know, there would be no accountability. The, the head of it was a single director who could only be removed by the president for cause. And what's interesting is that the justices, led by Roberts, said today, you can't do that. That violates separation of powers um, because there's no way to get rid of this, the head of this executive agency. Um, the president has to be able to fire people at will. But instead of throwing out the entire statute, all they do is cut out that one provision so that uh, this agency stays in place. And again, Justice Thomas got it right in his dissent when he says uh, the Supreme Court doesn't have the power to simply rewrite or erase a provision in, in this statute, in the Dodd-Frank bill. If part of it's unconstitutional, the entire law is unconstitutional. Yeah, I mean, you have to send it back to the drawing board. I mean, here's the thing, like, they have the ability to create it, instead of just having it one person, you could create, they could have created a board, sort of like the, you know, the Security Exchange Commission or something, where the board has, uh, you know, a tenure, uh, you know, so it's not just one person, there's a little bit more authority, or, or it's spread out a little bit, and, you know, appointed by the president or whatever, the way that, like I said, our... Our various boards, like the you know the SEC and others, are. That's one way they could have done it instead of just uh, you know investing all this power on one person for a fixed five-year term that can't be removed uh, other than you know inefficiency, neglect of duty, or malfeasance. I guess is the justification. They could have redone it, but that would have right. involved sending it back to Congress, saying, "Here, deal with this." Right? Exactly. Yes, that's what what should have happened. Is the Supreme Court should have said. Look, this provision you put in over the director of this agency is unconstitutional. Therefore, the statute is unconstitutional and this whole agency is unconstitutional and has to be immediately dissolved. It's up to Congress. If they want to repass the Dodd-Frank bill, they can certainly do it, but they're going to have to re- rewrite the law. But instead, the Supreme Court rewrites the law as if they're, uh, they're a super legislature. <laughs> 